All right, welcome to Do or Done See, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television and entertainment news with too many else with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... Yeah, I'm probably going to third one is... Kyle Bridger, I would say that I am the Stranger Things to John's Top Gun to Dave's Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. All right, I'll get my lightsaber out. Yes, we are talking about all three of those things tonight. It, it was a big pop culture weekend. So much stuff dropped. We were off last week. We have so much to talk about, including everything you just mentioned, plus some quick checks of some season finales, mid-season finales, another movie. There is so much to get to tonight. We got to just jump into the show I don't remember the first segment, though. Uh, John, what is it? In and out points. Yes, it is in and out points. We are going to start off with a report from the Hollywood Reporter. Marvel has signed a 20-year deal with the Stan Lee Universe to license the name and likeness of Stan Lee, who died in 2018, for use in future feature films, TV productions, Disney theme parks, and merchandising. All right, 20 more years of Stan Lee. Kyle, you excited about this? Um, I mean, they gotta do it, right? I mean, he is in everything, and he's synonymous with Marvel, so you gotta have him. I mean, that's all there is to it. Like, I think you do. I think you do. I mean, can we just do a, a picture? Can we just put them in a, a background? So I, I just hope this isn't going to be... When I first saw this headline, I'm like, okay, are we going to do the 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 Princess Leia thing of the last Star Wars where we're going to literally redigitize or like reuse footage and repurpose it for this just so we can get him to be in some random one second cameo in Thor 4 like it's just is it mm. really worth it? I mean the the term is rest in peace let the man rest in peace <laughs> like, yeah. John what do you think of this uh I don't look favorable uh, upon it I mean they already kind of turned his Twitter into like an advertising campaign like mm-hmm. boy I don't know I just feel so like tasteless like oh mm. you know the the, the guy uh, worked hard, did his part. Like you know, uh, yeah, it's good to remember him. Mm-hmm. But you really want to remember him by advertising, like you know, twenty percent off Marvel, you know, mm-hmm. cup holders or whatever. Like, come on, like <laughs> uh, let's yeah. let's let the guy have some dignity. You sure, that's not how he wants to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> yeah, the CEO of Genius Brands, which is a part of this deal, said, "quote It really ensures that Stan." through digital technology and archival footage and other forms, will live in the most important venue, the Marvel movies and Disney theme parks. Is that the is that the most important venue? The Marvel movies and Disney theme parks. Yes, we got to make sure we have uh, Stan Lee there for, for 20 more years. Why not? The article is pretty confusing, though, because it's it does state that it does not necessarily pave the way for like the digitally resurrected cameos Mm. but it does state that the deal gives marvel permission to use lee's name voice likeness signature in in movies television projects as well as to use his images existing footage existing audio recordings featuring him so it's like well i guess i mean it doesn't say one thing but i mean they have all that stuff so what's stopping them yeah I mean, th- just from the archival footage alone, I was assuming that Marvel has to do some kind of deal like this so that they can use that yeah. uh, footage or or his name or or his voice in any kind of marketing or any type of thing. So from Marvel perspective, you kind of have to make it happen because he is Marvel and like he does make a cameo in every movie, so it's like. The fans love him too, so mm. I feel like as a Marvel, you have to do it. But again, I agree with you guys. Let the dude kind of, you know, go off into the sunset. <laughs> yeah, and especially because I believe his like last actual like physical cameo that he shot something for was for Endgame. 
just it, just with the timing of perfect. you know filming and the death that, that, that's the perfect way to go out like this this culmination of of all that of all those films sure there's more now and we're setting up another phase and and this and that mm-hmm. but like that would have been such a way to kind of you know Put, he got snapped. Mm-hmm. Tie it with a bow. Like he got snapped. That's it. He's done. <laughs> Goodbye. <Yeah. laughs> but uh, oh, man. Yeah, no, he's, he's he can be funny. action figures, t-shirts. He's gonna be around. It sounds like. I think there's a, a distinct difference between having his likeness be uh, a photo as a as a uh, little tribute in the background yeah. or whatever, Which and completely him fine with yeah. being like you know a robot voice like. Come buy the Avengers mugs today only. Like you know, like that. Yeah. There's yeah. a really distinct difference between those two, and and I can see like I don't know what what the laws are behind it, but do they need all this permission stuff to to have a, an oil painting in somebody's house in a scene of him? Like you know what I mean? Like I mm, feel like maybe I feel like they didn't necessarily need to go that far and and include all everything about him. You know, basically his complete digitized self just to have small cameos like that so I, I don't know it doesn't seem like it adds up to paying tribute and more of how can we make a dollar you know yeah. mm. the the future is just scary overall i mean i remember hearing about was with star wars with marvel films that a lot of these actors now when they go in they get these like 3d molds and digital digital scans of their faces and then i guess disney just has them now and it's just like well what does that mean does that mean 20 30 years from now when whatever we want harrison ford in star wars episode 27 it's like okay Mm. here here he is we got him you know it's just like i don't like that like but yeah that's scary man yeah all right well talking a little bit about disney let's check out their streaming service disney plus we're going to talk about the the ad tier of this service. We got a little bit more info on the ad supported plan that will go live later this year. According to Variety in the Wall Street Journal, it'll reportedly run only four minutes of ads on programs that are an hour or less. So for an hour, just four minutes of ads in that hour. Uh, Peacock does about supposedly five. Uh, HBO Max, uh, their ad tier does four as well. So it's in line with other companies these ads though will have uh no ads of adult themes or anything related to alcohol and politics plus nothing from of course their entertainment competitors kyle does does that sound interesting to you did you think there was gonna be more ads or you know just four minutes that's all we got in an hour well here's the thing with any any kind of ads or anything i feel like when they're testing out something they set the the limit initially, and then it it eventually always works its way back. And then it's like, wait, I feel like there's, and it happens over time. It's just that wait, I feel like these commercials are getting longer now. I mean, it wouldn't be a surprise me if this is all cyclical, and you know, in forty years time, we're back to you know twenty minutes worth of commercials. Forty years, I don't know if I, we're still on the podcast. Forty years coming. If I'm watching Disney Plus. For this thing 40 years from now. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah. where like ads are on streaming services, mm-hmm. it's just TV, yeah. o- you know, over the internet at this point yeah. again, you know, it's all the same. I just feel like it's just going to work its way back to that. It also depends on what ads we are seeing, because I know when I had the Hulu ad uh, program, it was the same four ads every break. Mm-hmm. Like... I mean, now you're gonna get quick check minutes. summer sub days. It was that's what we had every <laughs> single break, four times in a row. But I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll have to wait and see what ads they choose. But here's the most interesting wrinkle of this: Disney plans on removing ads from all shows if it's being used by a kid's profile. Mm. Plus, there's gonna be no ads whatsoever on programs geared to a preschool audience, no matter what plan you have. The most interesting thing for me of all this is that first thing I said here. So no ads if you're using a kid's profile. But is there a rating limit? So it only goes up to a certain rating, so you can't be a child but also watching like Deadpool. That's what I'm really curious about because I would, I mean, is is Obi-Wan Kenobi? 
I know it's marketed as a TV 14, but is that a part of the kid's profile? Because I know a lot of kids love Marvel and love Star mm. Wars. So like what's stopping somebody from watching it on a kid's account other than if they take some of the programming away? I don't believe right now Deadpool is even on Disney Plus. I mean, yeah. at least in America. I was just giving I a, know, example. a random example. But like, you know, I can still watch any of their other programs on my yeah, kids Moon Knight. profile could you watch moon Knight or moon Knight mature uh, i i believe it's also a tv 14 i believe right now everything wow. they have they kind of make it that pg-13 tv 14 rating but it's just it it's like it seems like what's the catch here like what's yeah. the what's stopping john from watching everything on his profile age eight and up i don't know uh, and now they're they're sh- showing ad- this is gonna, might be a stupid question. They're showing ads for TV. How are they doing that for movies? Are they doing ads for movies? Uh, the article wasn't specific. It just said uh, four hour or four minutes uh, for an hour program or less, and they included mm. movie and TV in that program thing. But okay. how many movies are under an hour or less at this point in mm. our lives? But I would assume maybe it's just four minutes per hour. I don't know if it's. At the, mm. be- at the beginning, because I know I think with Peacock, it's like mostly in the beginning, but then they randomly cut them in throughout the, yeah. the point. But mm. the majority are in the, the first bit. I don't know how they're going to do it. I believe on stuff like for HBO Max, the HBO programs, they don't just like insert them in. Like you watch them in the beginning. So you're not watching yeah, The Sopranos and then halfway through they're going to show them whatever by a Volvo. And it's just. Yeah. So now can you disable does it disable the fast forward feature i'm guessing probably the other day i was watching paramount plus ad ad free plan and i'm trying to skip past their pro their programming that they're trying to promote whatever um the challenge and it's like okay i don't want this oh you can't fast forward it's like but this is an ad it's an ad for your company but yeah i saw reports of the peacock ad free having ads yeah so yeah Great world. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, this isn't the only thing uh, that Disney Plus and uh, some, some other services are adding to protect viewers. Uh, it's, it's actually a bit of a down note. Uh, we don't often discuss real world events, but coincidentally, both shows we are discussing this week share an opening scene that warranted a disclaimer after the devastating events at the Robb Elementary School in Texas. At first, Disney Plus. Didn't have anything over Obi-Wan Kenobi, but after outcry on social media, a message was added, quote, although this fictional series is a continuation of the story from Star Wars movies filmed many years ago, some scenes may be upsetting to viewers in light of the recent tragic events. This is actually only visible on the details page. It's not at the top of the program if you were just watching it as a disclaimer, Mm. but Netflix did add it at the top of the program for Stranger Things, uh, right at the top, it says, quote, we filmed this season of Stranger Things a year ago, but given the recent tragic shooting at the school in Texas, viewers may find the opening scene of episode one distressing. We are deeply saddened by this unspeakable violence and our hearts go out to every family mourning a loved one. Yeah, it's, you know, again, we don't talk about, you know, real life, you know, serious stuff on the podcast, but I thought it was interesting. I mean, for both these programs, to not only include this, but also to include this disclaimer on their streaming service. I mean, both mentioned that, you know, filming took place years ago, but I mean, it still doesn't change the fact that unfortunately these violent events continue to happen, you know, just every day. Yeah, but, I'm wondering, are they doing it to like save their own butts to like, oh, we have violence in this show? Like, yeah. this is our way of protecting ourselves, but also, or is it just like... Yeah. Hey, watch out! Like, I, I mean, vi- you know, Dave, yeah. violence and uh, is everywhere in yeah. uh, in in our yeah. media. So I don't know how you can get away from it, unless this is like. I think it was you know, just the type of violence because with both series they it dealt specifically with kids. And yeah. I, in a way, you know, it was yeah. a Jedi training school, so it's uh-huh. just you know just for a few days after it probably was it hit too close to home. And these shows are supposed to be meant as an ex- escape, you know, to, to you know, enjoy. But, yeah, uh, both shows uh, feature a scene with that. Both shows have those warnings 
Not a great mm. transition, but we will now talk about those shows. In order to talk about them, we have to go back. So guys, send us back. back in time. I'm We're back, back baby. baby. Gotta get back in time. All right. Obi-Wan Kenobi, the series premiere part one. It dropped on May 27th. Ten years after the events of Star Wars Episode 3, Obi-Wan Kenobi is in hiding on the planet Tatooine, watching over Anakin's son Luke, when he's called on a mission to rescue Anakin's daughter, Leia, after she is kidnapped by the Galactic Empire's Jedi hunting inquisitors in a plot to draw Kenobi out. All right, we all saw the premiere. Let's start off with Kyle. What did you think of Obi-Wan Kenobi? Um, I was interested. Um, I felt like... Uh, the little, um, the little uh, descriptor, the the uh, the preview before the the show really got me into it, got me back into the world. It was a timeline that I knew where I was at, um, and so that made it very accessible. Um, and I like Ewan McGregor, uh, uh, and you know, it had similar elements to. Some of the other shows that we've watched with Disney Plus, but uh, I think I'm interested in the material enough to keep uh, to keep going. But um, yeah, uh, some like graphic stuff, like the the video effects in some places was hit or miss for mm-hmm. me. But overall, I thought it was okay. Yeah. It was a, it was a good enough to keep me involved. Yeah, I hear you. I you mentioned that recap in the beginning. I love this because. I think Marvel needs to do this on all their shows. Yes. Give me a recap of what I'm supposed to know. I don't need to do all this homework. I don't want to rewatch the prequels. Yeah. But you <laughs> summed it up for me. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Like, you gave me everything I need. I will say, real quick nitpick before I get into the show. So, I, again, didn't remember much of the prequels, but the idea is, you know, Luke and Leia need to go into hiding so no one can find them or whatever. Uh, so, they split them apart. Leia goes over here. Luke... They're like, well, where do we go? Where, where do we send them where they can't find them? Where? How about his family? <laughs> Great idea. Perfect. Let's, let's bring them there. Nobody will ever think to look for it at his yeah. uncle's house. Yeah. But uh, all right. Um, before I get too far into it, John, what did you think of Obi-Wan Kenobi? Uh, I, I agree. I, I think that the premise is pretty strong. Um, I really liked, like like Kyle was saying, that it and it's grounded in... Uh, the Star Wars movies that we all know and, and you know, depending on which one enjoyed. Um, and that initial recap really, really sets the scene and, and puts your perspective right exactly where it needs to be to pick this up. And, and it fills in a part of a rad- rather large chunk of Star Wars history just from the movies that is glossed over. I mean, you end episode three and you start episode four and it's it's... 20 something years or however old you know luke is so it, it definitely is adding some i guess and layer too uh adding some context to the world and and i know that there had been rumblings of fans wanting this for years now so it's it's nice to see that it was it's finally you know it's finally here like people people listen to fans and 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 you know uh, recognize that oh yeah it's a good idea you know let's let's do this so i i i like that and I think so far the execution has been mediocre, but I think it has room to grow into something that is pretty cool. Yeah, I, d- I definitely hear you. Of the three Star Wars shows we've gotten, I think so far for Disney Plus, I think I may be the most into this one. Um, definitely better than the Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah, that was just a mess. Uh, and I think, and compare it to. Maybe it's the star power. Maybe it's the charisma of Ewan McGregor versus whoever mm. the guy was in Boba Fett. We talked about it. Like, really, that's your lead of a show? Mm. But, yeah, I mean, we, we have him here. You mentioned this, the CGI, some, eh, some hit or miss. But then you compare it to, I think, some of the other, other Marvel stuff we've been getting, whether it was Moon Knight, which we are now also seeing for She-Hulk. Like, mm-hmm. really... This is far and away better than what we've I, th- I You would think it's all the same group, <laughs> you would think, but yeah, uh, there's a, definitely a big difference between the two. So already just seems more cinematic uh, in that aspect. Mm. 
But the I think the uh, the villain too in this one is good because um, I almost forgot uh, where I remembered her from, and it was from the Queen's Gambit, and I'm like, she's playing whoa, older here. I didn't even yeah the, okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wait, that's her. And yeah, I just think nice. she's doing a good job so far as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I will say, though, of, of the three Star Wars shows, if we're going to really compare them, can we get off this this planet of Tatooine or whatever? <laughs> mm. It's the same exact town square in all of them. This mm-hmm. desert planet. This is a galaxy far, far away or whatever. Go anywhere else, any other world, the underwater world, the, the the forest where the Ewoks are. Anywhere else, just can we leave the desert? That's all I ask. It's Please. easy to shoot, man. And I just guess. put a, a put a ground a brown rug on the ground and and green screen, and they we're good to go. The set. They already paid for the set. You got to get your money's mm. worth, man. Yeah. I guess it just seems. It, and after seeing it so many times, it starts feeling like like uh, the Universal back lot. It's like, yeah, this is the place where back to the future is filmed and every single <laughs> like shot oh, and whatever you know 90s cw show yeah. oh yeah it's the same set as back to the future it's like yeah like go somewhere else put a new coat of paint on it mm. but um you know what else with this show i mean the girl that's playing who's it leia yeah the little girl it, dude they are asking her to do so much she's so young <laughs> yeah. dude mm. And they've got like whole monologues for her. I'm like, are you serious? What is this? Yeah, the, especially when Luke is not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Speed racing on. <laughs> but like, but yeah. As the, so, as the pilot went on, like I was so ready, just the yada yada over because like get this thing going because we know the whole episode is his conundrum. Like, does he come out of being a Jedi? Like, out of yeah. hiding to be? We know what's gonna happen. But I, I was com- actually surprised because. The trailer made it seem like he was going to be protecting Luke. That was the thing. He's going to be protecting Luke. Uh, but it seems like it's going to be the series is more about saving Leia. Um, mm. Meanwhile, th- this this kidnapped attempt at Leia here. I don't know if we even need a Jedi to, to save her from this group. Because this group is a bunch of bumbling. <laughs> they're they're yeah. chasing this girl around. Like, yeah. She is going so slow. She's Anybody Usain can... Bolt, dude. <laughs> yeah, really. She is speed and then, demon. And then the the big thing that gets in their way. Oh, there's a log right in front. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. That's not, oh, no, I can't go farther. It's just like, come, you can't jump over that. But uh, what a weird group. It, it's they like, really this... did a James Bond chase scene with a yeah. five year old. Yeah. <laughs> And it's all being led by by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. Uh, but it was all a trap to just lure him out of hiding. Um, we, I mentioned Flea. Did he also catch who uh, the the other Jedi was? I don't know if you're going to catch him because he's more of a behind-the-scenes guy. But the other Jedi that's trying to get help from Obi-Wan, asking for mm. help, winds up, spoiler alert, dead at the mm. end of the first episode. That was Benny Safty of the Safty Brothers. Uncut gems. Uncut jams. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, he he'll, he'll I think he might have been in uh Licorice Pizza as well. So he's been packed, you know. Okay. Pack, you know, it's just like it was like interesting. I'm like, wait a minute. I recognize you. What are you doing here? You're, you're <laughs> not supposed to be here. But um Yeah. Um let's see, we had uh Rojo 36, our friend Nick Rojas. Um he I uh, instagrammed us on all three of our shows tonight mm. so we'll share his thoughts he's the honorary fourth co-host tonight <laughs> uh for he, for him obi-wan kenobi was a mixed bag it hit the nostalgic points but didn't grip me 100 percent. Mm. i can completely yeah. see with that totally understand that we are however we're gonna get some more nostalgia because we still have yet to see the return of hayden christensen as vader uh, oh, he yeah. will be back as Darth Vader. However, it's interesting to know initially it wasn't going to be Vader. There's going to be more Darth Maul in this show. Dude, I used to love Darth yeah. Maul when I, he was, was like guy? a cool villain. The the, double the dual, lightsaber, yeah. yeah. Don't mess with Darth Maul. Yeah, well, supposedly actor Ray Park was in active prep, uh, but his scenes were cut in a big creative overhaul. Uh, supposedly the scripts were shown to the Mandalorian team, 
and they were concerned about the show covering similar ground to their show. The whole lone wolf and cub story that, you know, Kenobi comes out of hiding to protect a child. Oh my God. This child God. isn't Baby Yoda, it's, it's Luke Skywalker. Yeah. So the creators were like, eh, yeah, maybe go a little bit bigger, do something else. Uh, <laughs> so they kind of supposedly retooled it. So maybe that was the idea that the, um, Kenobi was going to be kind of protecting Luke. But now it's going to, maybe it's, yeah, now it's save Leia. Like it's a mm. similar, but a little different. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I can understand that, but uh, it has been a while. So I'm hoping whatever that they landed on, it wasn't like just their plan B and they're actually still like, you know, 110% excited yeah. the beginning, middle and end of this plan. Because if not, it's like, oh, well, we yeah. wanted to do this. And now we we're going to do our second choice. But that's what I'm worried about. But uh, yeah, uh, any other thoughts? Are you guys going to keep going with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Kyle? Um, I might dip in, in and out. Uh, I feel like with these weekly shows, I've been like maybe bowing out for a couple of weeks and then watching a few at a time and then coming back. Uh, this might be one where I stick around just because I do know more about this timeline of Star Wars. Um, so I am more interested in it. And so far, even no though, Baby Yoda even, there, and I know how much you hate Baby Yoda. <laughs> well, I just don't get Baby Yoda. I mean, if you, you I watch the get, show, just I feel would... Baby Yoda. Just let him. <laughs> oh, okay. His essence, yeah. his aura. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I might, uh, I might stick around with this one, even though it was very average. All right, and John. Yeah, I think I'll stick around and see if they um, improve their execution. Um, cause like I said, I think the premise is there. I think they just got to figure out exactly how they're executing and, and what they want to do with the show. And, and I'm willing to give it a, a couple more episodes to, um, see if it can start centering itself. Definitely hear all you guys on that. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of mixed still. Maybe, yeah, maybe jump in, jump out. I don't know. I'm on the fence. It's the Marvel and Star Wars. I always have a hard time with, but all right. It's because nope. you're not a true fan. I'm man. not. I'm not a true fan. <laughs> I am, however, into so far Stranger Things season four, the premiere chapter one, the Hellfire Club, also dropped on May 27th. It's been three years since we have visited Hawkins, but it's just been six months since season three's The Battle of Star Court. Struggling with the aftermath, our group of friends are separated for the first time and navigating the complex drama of high school as a new and horrifying supernatural threat surfaces. All right, five episodes dropped, mostly focusing on chapter one, the first one here of season four. John, what did you think? Well, uh, slight spoilers. Um, I am still kind of upset with the finale of three mm. and how they didn't follow through with killing somebody. Why? I, I understand he's a beloved part of the show, grow up hair and just like if you're gonna kill someone <laughs> kill someone it just seems like such a cop out but yeah other than that what let me say let me say this it's not bad but what are we doing what is new in here mm-hmm. the kids are are dealing with uh different dynamics of their friendships falling apart and 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 all that there's uh there's evil there's D D. Uh, oh it's high school that's new mm-hmm. uh uh you know that, but what else? What else, what else changed? There's. I, th- I feel like after the first season, they've been chasing that feeling of the first season, and this is yeah. just a continuation of that chase. And we're just not. We're not getting there because season one came out of nowhere and was just a a, a lightning bolt. And now it's kind of like you know someone sitting out there with a nine volt and some tin foil <laughs> trying to make more lightning. It, it doesn't. It's not working. <laughs> That's it's, funny. it's all right, but it's not great. Interesting. Yeah. So for me, uh, I definitely you know. <laughs> <laughs> season one came along yeah instant hint loved it uh season one and i'm like you know what this is enough we don't need any more season two diminishing returns season three i really i don't think liked i really did not care much for season three for some reason i don't know if it's just been the time away but i've been liking season four so far i've actually seen three episodes so far of this new season and to me it doesn't feel too much of the sequel itis because of yet yeah, because i think the first three seasons i could be wrong but it was like mind flayer demon gorgon or whatever the names were of these super villains or whatever at least right now it seems like this new villain while in the world of the upside down is new it seems like a new mystery around it different motive different reasoning like there's something just feels different with this creature 
And at least now the group is split up across the country. Unlike other seasons, Eleven is without her powers. So it's like, okay, well, you know, it's they have some they don't have all their tools that they used to have in their arsenal to take on the usual threat. It's a different threat. So right. So right now, uh, I'm, you know, I'm into this season compared to, I think, the last two seasons. But I can definitely see what you're saying, because, yeah, I mean, we're still in the 80s. It's the, you know, the D&D, the it's it's the same characters, maybe with a few additions. But, uh, yeah, before I go too far down that, Kyle, what do you what have you thought so far? Season four? Um, I was just uh, so so on the first episode. I've seen a little bit of episode two and I like it a bit more. Um, I think I, I kind of agree with both of you. And I, and I mean, pick uh, a side. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> like I get everything that John is saying, because I think if you're not into these characters, you're not uh, going to be in the show. I mean, an hour and 10 minutes, yeah. 18 minutes or whatever the first episode was. And, you know, it's a lot of just unpacking their relationships. And if you're not with that, uh, it's going to be a long ride. And so um, I will say uh, they it transport you right back into the 80s. So um, if you want that nostalgic fix, it, it will definitely give you that. Um, I feel like they always do good with production element wise. Uh, so that they, they're good there. It's just like, are those characters enough to sustain you? Is there enough meat there to, to want to, yeah, if you, you don't know, like the characters, get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> basically. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think the first episode was that great because I'm like, all right, let's get to it. Yeah. There was, uh, it I, was. I will admit, it, it took a while going. Maybe because I've seen three at this point, I know more of the the mystery of the season and where we're mm-hmm. going. But yeah, that first one, it's like half the episode was them trying to find a D and D partner, you know, to fill in yeah. for Lucas. Yeah, and it's just like, come on, get to it. Especially with how long these episodes are, it's like, come on, I want, I want, yeah. <laughs> like. Let's get to the point here. And also, I found the uh, the nerd who's also like cool, you know, the... him to be annoying. The uh, the uh, Eddie, I think, is his character. Oh, the the head of the D and D club. Yeah, there. yeah. I found him to be Hellfire Club. Yeah, yeah. super annoying. Well, well, we'll we'll talk about him in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> we had we've had this uh, image of the the new villain here, Voldemort. 2.0 yeah. mixed with Doc Ock or whatever. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, I will say, because we're seeing a lot of him, and that's very, I think, very specific to where the show is now with their budget. Because season one, we didn't really see much until the, it's it was the Jaws effect. You don't see much because they didn't have the money to show much. Now we have the money, so we're going to show as much of him as humanly possible. Uh, we, we, we briefly talked about it before, but it's rumored that this season... Per episode, cost thirty million dollars. <laughs> That's per crazy. Game of Thrones final season was half that an episode, fifteen million an episode, and they had dragons and you know in a different world landscapes and yeah. higher <laughs> stats. Yeah, that's crazy. That and is insane. So they're gonna they're gonna do a lot with these. Hopefully, with this thirty million. I mean, I know it's the amount of sets in the first episode, just in, in a montage they were doing the cinematography with the cheerleading sequence. Mm. They're, they're embellishing anything they can because they got to show what well, they spent also, thirty million on. <laughs> yeah, I mean thirty million. I mean they're making movies. They're yeah. making like that's a budget of a movie in like the eighties or nineties, you yeah. know? And that's a, that's a movie. Probably was the budget of Ghostbusters that they yeah. made fun of in the second, you know, like, yeah, it's crazy. But maybe they're also paying for all these new characters. Uh, we got Jonathan's weed friend, uh, Argyle. Yeah. We got the hellfire club leader, Eddie Munson. I believe we got, we have a bunch of new people. Anyone that stood out to you? I know Kyle hates Eddie so far. Oh, uh, John, I do you have any favorites, like least favorites? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of him either. I, I don't know. I, I want to see how they develop a bit more. But um, yeah, so far, I understand their their roles, except for maybe the weed guy. Um, but I, I mean, I, I guess you don't have to like a character for them to serve a purpose in a story and to do their part well, you know? Yeah. 
Well, it's not looking good for Eddie. So, I mean, if you, yeah. at, the, at the end of this year, we had the head cheerleader in his house mm. get lifted to the ceiling, possess, snap, eyes burst out of her skull. So, doesn't look great for him where he's at right now. But I also thought at the same time, will the police really, like, blame him? I mean, like, you guys live in Hawkins. You, you know some weird stuff goes down. <laughs> like, is it really his fault? Like, how did he possibly do this? But, uh... Yeah, it doesn't look good on paper, um, at least at the end of the episode for Eddie. Yeah. I mean, that whole... The, the thing that really annoyed me was the 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 scene in the, the woods where he's, like, talking and he's, like, talking about how he plays, like, the instruments and stuff. I'm like, oh, so you went from nerdy man to now you're going to cool man for the cheerleader? What is this? Well, the what is this? Is High school, like... man. You reinvent yourself to... Yeah, but, <laughs> I scoop reinvent you. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, and we were talking about characters, new characters, the return of characters, and this is what John was talking about. I am also still annoyed with the the fake out death of Hopper. Of course, he was going to be in the show. He's the the you know the lead of the show. I mean, I guess one of the leads, at least for the adults. And I just thought what they did is just like it's such a fake out at the end of season three. And so far, it's like what are we doing with him? He's captive mm. in a Russian prison. You know, Joyce gets this Russian package and a letter that Hopper is still alive. I just no, don't like what no consequences. Yeah. What, what, what does it mean? If there's no, if there's no stakes and no consequences, yeah. if everyone is going to come out at the end every time on top, uh, then all right. All right. Good guys. Win, we're Barb. done. Like, you know, Except poor Barb. She was the one that her death was final. <laughs> yeah. But, and, um, uh, Samwise. Well, well, I forget his 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 name in the show, not or in, in real life too. Um. Oh, I know you're talking about the her yeah. Sean her, Aston. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he uh didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I mean, light spoiler. By the end of episode three, the Joyce Hopper, all this stuff, they're still separated. Like they're still, and this is like, how long is this gonna take to get them together? Yeah. And like, it's just, I don't know. I just get me back to Hawkins. Get me to that mystery. Mm. I'd rather be with those characters than yeah yeah a Russian yeah for sure prison okay but um I mentioned the kids I will say I don't know if you guys were as much as I was distracted a little bit maybe of how much they've grown oh my god dude what? yeah they're going off to college they are <laughs> I don't know they're approaching middle age <laughs> like, <laughs> why do they still have such bad haircuts I think it's just like to disguise. They're trying sure to make him is. look young a little bit still. It's like, but man, Will with that bowl cut just is not. Yeah. Th- that's probably the biggest like comparison from season one to now. Yeah. But, I, I mean, that talk about something that didn't survive his hair. His yeah. haircut's horrible. Meanwhile, Lucas grew and also, six wait, feet tall before, here. Before <laughs> yeah. we move on, Will, what is his purpose in the show so far now? To be a weenie. Yeah, he literally I mean, has zero purpose right now. The, the issue is, this is like the exact thing. This reminded me, to compare to The Hangover, Doug, you know, Hangover 1, he's a part of the gang, but he's not. He's off on his own. You, you mm-hmm. don't worry about him. It's all about Lucas and Mike and Dustin. That's the group. So then in season two, when it becomes a success, it's like, well, we can't just have Will go off again. Like, I guess he's part of the group. And it's like, did we really ever do a chemistry test between this yeah. group of friends? Like, does it actually work? Yeah, I don't I don't know what he's really there for, but yeah. Um, but and but you mentioned Lucas. Yeah. Lucas, yeah, looks like a grown man, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's the star of the basketball team, which is causing some some conflicts with with uh the D and D group it's just like and it's causing this big riff and i just love the one point where it's just like well have him move his D thing it's like well how about you move the game it's like this is the yeah. championship game with people <laughs> commuting in you got hundreds of people the cheerleaders and this and that and i'm probably sure maybe even some local media move his little D like five person thing to the next night or push it an hour come on come on but that's not the point he was I making know. dude i know <laughs> but um now, Silicon, we definitely are going to have something involved with that opening scene we kind of mentioned earlier with Eleven, because I feel like it's going to be, is Eleven actually bad or evil or 
mm. twisted in some way. I mean, we saw this. I mean, we never saw her actually do it. So we don't. I mean, will it be this fake out at the end of the season where mm. she was actually saving somebody and it just looks like she did this destruction? But yeah. I don't know. Uh, the show is at least, I think, setting us up to believe that she is uh, maybe has a little bit of an evil in her. Mm hmm. But, yeah, so... Which, do you think... I, I don't think this show... They can't kill Hopper. You think they're going to make her evil? <laughs> Get out of here. No, I saw something that Millie Bobby Brown was like, in an article, was like, you know, yeah, it'd be great if her, like, you know, we, we kind of kill some people off. And I think she meant, like, as a, like, not only if we're going to make bigger stakes on the show, but also, like... Get some people out of these contracts that they're stuck. Yeah. Cause I'm sure this is like first position for them and they have to do this whenever yep. the show comes back. And it's oh, like it's a big man. show, but it's like, all right, I want to go do movies now. Yeah. Yeah. But, um all right. Another thing that I think is gonna happen, and I guess I'll say spoiler alert, even though the spoiler alert is from Netflix again. This is my concern that I had with Ozark, the still for the season. When you stop and pause an episode or you start the next episode is Max floating, going up into the air, just like the cheerleader character. Mm. And again, it goes back to what John's saying. Are we really going to, she's one of the main people. Are we really going to lose her? But it seems like she's at least going to be tied into this. And I guess that's a spoiler because yeah. it's just, why you pick any other thing from the show, pick something from episode one. Why show this? Grab a screenshot of everyone together as just like a, a group shot, like anything, <laughs> anything that's not this. <laughs> yeah, you would think Netflix would be a little bit more hesitant with these spoilers, especially after I'm sure we all saw the article. The creators, uh, the Duffer Brothers, had a quote total meltdown after photos of the cards from the Monopoly tie-in board game revealed crucial plot elements from the season before it was even released. So this oh, Monopoly tie-in game revealed what what happens in season four, and yeah, they're they're rightfully angry. It's like they spend years right making this, and then you just yeah. tweeted it out, like you know. But oh man, this is exactly I don't know if you remember with 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 Grogu, Baby Yoda, in Mandalorian. The reason why there wasn't a toy that Christmas it was because John Favreau was like, "I'm keeping this thing a secret. If this thing yet yeah, drops in September." They have to already start making the toys in like July. Uh -huh. This will get out, and I don't want it to get out. I want it to yeah. be a surprise for the show. And sure, it cost them, you know, money that Christmas, but it was probably a bigger surprise overall. So, mm -hmm. but uh, the last thing I will say about Stranger Things, Kyle mentioned it: the run times. These episodes are a little long, uh, seventy-five minutes or longer. Uh, and for me, I just want to like savor and enjoy these. But I also at the same time feel pressure to finish now. Yeah. Because literally Friday night when I looked up a season three recap to watch on YouTube, there was already videos online explaining all the events of season four. And it's just like this thing just came out. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you give me a minute to watch these? Like, you know, especially episode nine, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> I think it's longer than Top Gun. We watched Top Gun today. But. This is a this isn't this is just a plea from Dave. Do Please. you hear it in his voice? Want, Come I on, want, people. I want my life back. Because I, I, but I, I really think though Netflix should have really tried like a weekly release with this because it's like yeah, yeah. they dropped five episodes or yeah. or a hundred and fifty million dollar production just one day. And it's like, yeah. sure, this will be number one this week and, and probably next week as well. But two weeks from now, a month from now, will it be? Everyone is now just asking everyone what ep what yeah. episode they're on, right? Yeah. And so that happens for the next couple of weeks. And then eventually no one can talk about it because no one's finished it. Yeah. And then by the time everyone has finished it, it's out of the zeitgeist. Yeah. Volume two is around. And then... Yeah, you know, now we're waiting there three years before season five, and but yeah. on top of that too, it's in. I don't know if this is true, but in my mind, it seems like they staggered the episodes to try and keep those subscriptions for another month or so. Uh, how is oh, it's definitely I, different quarters? Definitely yeah. different quarters. Yeah. So why would you not do weekly when you can stretch it even further? You know, yeah. I don't know. It just, it just, it just seems like a weird way to do it. 
just throw them all on the table and then wait and throw the rest. Like just just pace them out. Uh, it was cool when the first season dropped and we got to binge it all. And it, like I said, the, the flash in the in the pan. That's not what this is. This is not this is not a, a, a lightning strike. This is a, a different. It should be treated differently, you know. Yeah, just imagine a, a Friday night movie. You know, you're going on. Oh, it's Friday night. A new episode, of Stranger Things. All right. What, what movie am I watching this week? And it's but instead, it's like, nope. You know, some people finished it by three o'clock on Friday afternoon, and then now they're done until July. It's just like, yeah, it's just. But you know, some people are ready for more. Uh, at Rojo Thirty Six, the episodes could have been three hours each, and I still loved it. Can't wait for Volume Two. So. He's ready. Yeah, He's ready. I know some. I know some people on uh, Twitter have been loving it, but I, I also see a lot of. Oh, I haven't made it to that episode yet. Wait, yeah. what episode? It's just like spoilers a lot of are that out happening. there. Got to be careful now. Got to be careful. Got to either devote a day to it or just get off the internet. All right. Well, we devoted our day to our next film. Kyle and I just saw it in IMAX. Top Gun Maverick. It also dropped this weekend. May 27th, what a weekend we had. After more than 30 years of service as one of Navy's top aviators, Pete Mitchell, a.k.a. Maverick, is back at Top Gun, this time as an instructor to a new generation of pilots, including the son of his former partner, Goose. All right, Kyle and I saw it. What did you think? Top Gun Maverick. Um... I mean, it was good to be back. Uh, it was good to see it in IMAX, even though they had a giant bug on the screen. I will just I think it was on the projector, on. yeah, but yeah. it was like a little fuzzy. <laughs> I love how they have a big, giant ad right before you watch the IMAX movie, and it's like, see it like never before, in the best resolution, the best sound, the best this, this, or that. And I'm like, I wanted to be at the end. I wanted to be like, there is a bug on the screen. Is it the best yeah. bug? Where, where, where's was... Nicole Kidman? Heartbreak feels good in a place like this. <laughs> yeah. With that bug in the... Anyways. So, Top Gun, the movie. Yeah. Yes. Let's uh, get to it. Good to be back. Uh, you know, Tom Cruise is a certified movie star. Um, I thought they had a good cast. Uh, the, the characters were kind of a cliche... A lot of cliche dialogue, but the action is cool, and I'm in the world, and I'm about it. Uh, now, somebody could say they thought it was the cheesiest thing of all time, and they're not wrong, but I was digging it. So what's wrong with that? I hear you. It, it was just good to have a non-Marvel blockbuster mm. in the movie theater, seeing it in IMAX, big screen, popcorn soda, like... You know, get out of the heat of the the summer sun and the AC. Like, this is what you know, movies and seeing it on the big screen with the engines revving, the sheets, the seats shaking. You know, and compared to the first one, which I watched the other night, it was like night and day. You know, we're these the first one, like close up shots of the cockpit that you don't even know or, where are they actually. Like, is this just yeah. a, a backdrop that they're in front of? But this one, it's like we're in the playing with tom cruise we're we're flying upside down we're, it's so uh, much wider we're seeing everything and and it just makes me wonder because we know cruise is flying these planes we we know it but like we we heard all the stories he's actually doing this so it makes me real curious like how did they like do the others i mean i'm sure they're not flying the planes like did we just have another pilot and they're sitting shotgun like yeah because it looked really like just like tom so I, i'm really curious of how they they faked it you know because it they, didn't really they look They probably CG, had him like, in the back and somehow yeah. are able to, you know, crop it and fit it together somehow. Mm. I'm got to imagine. But yeah, Nick also said it was a perfect summer blockbuster. As always, practical is greater than CGI. And yeah, you definitely had those, you know, those action moments and the, the big screen spectacle of it all. Yeah. Definitely felt like a sequel to Top Gun. Mm. They They... They definitely had some homages to the first one. They had the long 80s title intro with the 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 black screen, the the white text, the same music and everything. Even the the closing credits that looked like too many cooks, you know, with all the this is who, this is this person, that's that person. Yeah. It's just but um I think the thing Kyle really wants to talk about 
the shirtless beach sport. Of, <laughs> this time, spoiler, wasn't volleyball. Yeah, it was, it was football. a game of football. Yeah. All right. What did you think, Kyle? I you were excited. <laughs> I why are you? I was excited. I mean, I guess I don't know. You know what? I am upset about with that scene though. Mm. I thought we could have had a better song. Mm. I thought it was a bad song choice okay. for that scene. But uh, everything else, yeah, we're building a team, John Hamm. Get mm-hmm. with it, all right? Yeah, John Hamm completely playing the heel in this film of just, oh, yeah, just let Maverick do his thing. He's the best, you know. But yeah, everyone is against Maverick. It's you yeah. know Ed Harris's character, John Hamm. That's like every movie. It's, every movie is like Ethan Hunt. You can't do this. We don't. It's like <laughs> how many times? Like it's it's getting really hard to distinguish when you're watching these films. Tom Cruise, Maverick, Ethan Hunt, they're all the same person. <laughs> like, literally in the beginning of the film, I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess Ethan Hunt's flying, pl- you know, planes now. I'm like, okay. Like, I just went with it. I don't see the difference between those characters. But, yeah, yeah. you mentioned the song. I will say, you know, where the, they did this too much in the 86 version, but we should add, do, 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 take yeah. my breath away. We should have had that at some point. Because they played yeah. it like 600 times in the first one. We couldn't get it once in this new film, <laughs> even as just like a joke. As somebody's mm-hmm. ringtone, come on. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where it's like, as you mentioned, Kyle, you know, it was a lot of fun. But I wouldn't also be surprised if people found some points like cheesy and, you know, yeah. the dialogue. It has the, class, yeah. the classic action movie beats. But it was still yeah. like a fun, you know, movie. Yeah, classic action movie beats, classic action movie like characters, um, expositional dialogue out the wazoo where he's like coming into the bar. And he's like, oh, Amelia. And then he meets like um, or like the, yeah. the daughter or whatever and says the daughter like, oh, the daughter's name. And I'm like, all right, we get it. You're introducing another character the same exact way. But <laughs> I don't care, man. It was fun. Yeah. It's always cool to fly in. You felt the need for like speed. Yeah. yeah, I did feel the need for speed. And I love how the villains are all just in black. Yeah, you, shaded. Never know. you never yeah. know what country like, you're actually supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, it's just but, like some fictitious, yeah. you know. One thing I actually really liked with this, like the update from the original. The original, if you're actually like watching, it was like so much like these training sessions. They were all trying for this like trophy. And it was like you kind of bl- like what? Who, what's what's important about this like what are we actually doing this for but this film i felt was very clear this is the plan this is the mission we're going on and you know we we after that all happens it almost also becomes a little bit of like a heist film a little bit of a mission impossible where we have like maverick and rooster you know together trying to you know they have to go into an enemy aircraft and they have to it's just like you know the just smile and wave and like it was very like mission impossible comedic Mm. you know action and i thought that was a great update and and also like made sense i mean we knew going into this like we were going to have scenes with rooster and maverick just because of this kind of father-son bond that you know they kind of have now and you knew they were going to be in the same plane at some point. You knew he was going to be in the back. There would be some kind of eject moment. Um, but I really like the scene of them in the in the woods where it's like, I saved your life. I saved your life. What were you thinking? You told me not to think. Like, it was like this whole, yeah. you know, that was a good one. back and forth. But, mm-hmm. yeah, overall, I think it was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think it's worth it to go see it in the theaters. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people did. I'll, I'll mention... Good news for you, John. Biggest I know, opening John. for Tom Cruise ever. Uh, his first weekend over $100 million. And it made $124 million over three days. And then it had the Memorial Day record of $156 million over the four days. Wow. It also helped that it actually opened in the most theaters of all time. There was 4,732 theaters that showed it, which is seven more than the previous one. 2019's Lion King. So it was in a lot of theaters, uh, big holiday weekend, and this will also help you, John. Tom Cruise did his thing. Paramount Pictures has been doing the 45 days in theaters, and then it goes to streaming, shortened window. Cruise was like, no, you're not doing that with this. <laughs> 120 days, then that's, that's it. It's going to be in theaters, and then the normal, then it'll go to streaming after all that. So it's going to be in theaters for a bit here. 
doesn't really have, I don't think, much competition, at least for a couple of weeks. So, wow. there you go. Wow, John's going to be raking in that cash. Was that your number one selection? Uh, I think it was. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. They just have to show it over 70 times a day, and I'll be fine. Yeah. They might have done that today at Lincoln Square, because, like, we were... <laughs> we weren't allowed into our theater until five minutes before. We, yeah, we weren't allowed into the theater, and they already had previews basically going <laughs> by the time the. Wow. So I think they like maybe added a show or something to squeeze it in because it probably was a big weekend. But all right, all right, we don't have any time, but we're gonna do it anyways. We're gonna squeeze in <laughs> just some little mini reviews, a little quick check. We're going from one action film to another. Kyle, what do you got? I watched Ambulance. Uh, I remember seeing the trailer thinking, how does this happen in this movie? Um, And Michael Bay is the reason (laughs) it happens in a movie. Um, uh, The action in this movie is pretty intense. Every line of dialogue stinks. It's so (laughs) bad. It's so, so bad. Um, I would even say like the production elements are good, but they're really, na- I like got nauseous from some of the <laughs> camera work cause they had like a drone going around like a scene, like a conversation scene between two characters. That was a little insane, but, uh, I will say this, this movie is manic. We got, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in this situation where he's like holding this job over his brother's who's played by the Yaya Abdul-Mateen dude. It is all over the place. I would say watch it for the action only and know what you're getting into with Michael Bay. All right? Yeah. Good luck. I will say, the, the some of the stuff I saw with the trailer, like some of the... Because I think they use a lot of drone stuff of going in, you know, explosions and like following like yes. probably the ambulance around. Probably would have, you know, got me seasick in the theater. But mm. uh, it seems pretty cool, though, at least in parts. I don't know if I could do two it hours is. or whatever it is of it, but... It is. You just yeah. have to, you know, make it between those parts to, you know, to really enjoy. Yeah. When we get <laughs> you the, know? Uh, the Hardcore Henry cut where you have the, the 3D... Oh, I remember God. that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember watching that, yeah. yeah. Whatever happened to that, but... All right. Um, ambulance. We have a, a mixed review... From Kyle, I would say. Yeah. I think we have a. I just realized something. I didn't check ahead of time if Kyle had watched this. I really hope he caught up with this. If not, we're we'll, we'll see. Because it's gonna be a big <laughs> spoiler. John, what do you have? Uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, the Better no. Call Saul. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, thank God. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so the mid-season finale, plan and execution. I'll see myself out. You guys can discuss what all went down. Sure. Um, so, yeah, mid-season finale. Holy cow. Uh, I had seen a tweet from one of the showrunners, I believe, saying that they didn't film it as a traditional mid-season finale and not to expect like a cliffhanger or anything. And then they throw mm. the biggest cliffhanger they could at yeah. us. Um, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was kind of hoping that we would get half a season of Saul and half a season of Gene. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. But I'm not upset that we're not getting it because mm. the Saul story is just so good and there's so many questions left unanswered still. But mm. um, yeah, we're we're getting into some crazy territory here. Like just the fallout from the end of the finale. Yeah, how, it's how, gonna have. How is anyone gonna get out of that situation? Like, I don't know. Yeah, because it's in their apartment. And there's with, blood everywhere. Yeah, and it's just like uh, how even. I mean, all right, spoilers, obviously, but even if they get out of there okay and Lala leaves, they still have a body on the floor and yeah. blood everywhere. Yeah. It's just, ah. Uh, and and they continue to go above and beyond um, with the cinematography and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. just this, the shot of their planning board getting splattered in blood or uh, I think yeah. even um, Ray Seahorn directed a, an episode or, or so and, and they just brilliant cinematography and, and and it was just great i i, I the show is <laughs> i mean it, to me it's still the best thing on tv uh, yeah it, it, without a doubt yeah i uh i forget how good this show is and then i watch it and i just like yeah. fall effortlessly just watch it it's so easy 
Um, it's fun to watch. And the other thing that we have to think about with that body is they have a whole plan set up for Harry Hamlin's demise on their board. And they have nothing to do with the dead body, but that it's, you know, yeah. how does it not look like they meant to not only that sabotage him but the last couple things he said was saul setting me up saul setting me up yeah. who's the first person they're gonna knock on the door about yeah it's just yeah. Uh, and he told his wife oh, man. and it's just like every everybody that he has a close relationship knows that yeah. you know saul is the one that he at least thinks is all his troubles there's no way no one's not gonna come knocking so mm. i don't know uh, how would transition from this into the Saul and Breaking Bad. I mean, I could see where we're going, but there's also still so much that I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm really. Well, how does this connect? How does that see, connect? Yeah. And, and I, I've even been watching some of the behind the scenes stuff from like previous seasons, and there's so much that I already like not forgot, but like you don't think about because of all the action that's happening yeah. now. And I can't wait to rewatch that and we rewatch Breaking Bad. And and from what I understand, this and we've already kind of seen it is supposed to kind of re- recontextualize some stuff about Breaking Bad. And I, I don't know. I, 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 I sincerely hope that I know it's going to be great. I hope that they mm. continue this, this environment and, and maybe find another person that they can do another show on because they, they have something magical. And if they keep going in this direction, even if it's not as good as Saul, which I think is better than Breaking Bad, it's still going to be something pretty dang good in my opinion. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I have high hopes. <laughs> We just got to spend some time sitting and waiting now. Like my Monday nights are just what there's nothing I to do. <laughs> I, I sat there last night doing nothing. I was like, oh no, <laughs> yeah. nothing to do. We we do podcasts on Monday there's nights. Come nothing on. to do Mondays. Nothing to do. <laughs> Come on. Well, sounds like you guys are mixed on it and go either way. I can't yeah, really tell if yeah, you like I it or not. Yeah, I would say that mixed. Yeah. yeah. But all right, I'm gonna talk about Survivor 42, the finale. Uh, I've tried. I probably won't really spoil who won and who lost and all that stuff, but I'll talk about broad strokes of what went down in this new era. You know, forty one, forty two. This new era of Survivor. They filmed these back to back, so they could kind of use the the same tricks and advantages. And boy, did they! It was basically a carbon copy structure wise of forty one, but they may have learned from their mistakes in the first go around and the edit and. You know, the cast, I feel like the cast in 42 probably gelled a bit better, and I like them more than the cast of of 41. So probably overall, I would like this season better than the previous. However, a bunch of the changes they made from, you know, 1 through 40 versus 41 to 42, not really loving still. Uh, Maybe it's just I'm such a purist, but uh, it was 39 days. Now it's 26 days. Fine, I don't really care about the actual days because you can't really see the difference on the TV. It's just they're making it too crazy and hard to compensate for this, whether it's just the conditions that they're giving them or just the amount of advantages. They're just adding so much, and I just always keep going back, just trust your cast. Just trust them as personalities. You you casted them for a reason. Stop meddling in the game. Like There were so many advantages that this season that they completely edited around one that we didn't even know the star player had until that season was over they had an advantage we didn't even know about it because there's just so many advantages they did not enough time to concentrate on all of them and there's one called the knowledge is power where it's basically in a in a game of lies and deceit you can't lie and you must give up your idol if you are asked about it and it's just like what are we doing? The, the do or die twist, which is literally, let's make a deal. Choose box A, you're safe. Box B, you are sent home. And it's just the, the best tribal of the entire season was only because she happened to pick box A and was safe. If she would have went home, tribal's over. We go, you know, that's it. We got our elimination this week. Instead, because of that, she was safe. And the amount of backstabbing and, and trickery that immediately followed that was was marvelous. Like, it's just... Just trust your cast. Let them do their thing. And my final thing was um, 41, 42. They had the votes read live on the island. They didn't do that. I mean, since season one, you know, Borneo, the very first one, they did it this time because um, they were unsure about the live reunion in the U.S. because of COVID. I mean, these were shot in early 2021. So they didn't know what the world was going to be, you know, post 
if there was a vaccine and who was going to get it and all that stuff. But I don't, it sounds like they're never going back to live shows, at least for the foreseeable future, probably because the production saw, hey, we saved a bit of money on this. <laughs> do we really want to spend that money again with a live show? But to me, the these af- they do like an after show immediately after the winner is revealed there. And it just doesn't work. I mean, you have the final three there, hungry, tired, like nobody on the entire cast has seen a second of the show to share what, hey, what we didn't see or what were the big moments? Because like mm. you don't know what clicked yeah. outside because you've been in this bubble the whole time. Meanwhile, Jeff does this just annoying thing. This is my nitpick. They... That the thing ends, it's like okay, pizza, champagne. Let's like, let's discuss. Let's break this down. You, you don't need to give them pizza because first of all, as as podcasters, we know there's nothing worse than chewing and talking. And now mm. we're seeing this with them. But the people eating the most pizza, it's the jury that just left a pretty much resort. It's like if anyone should be eating, it's the final three who've been yeah in the game this whole time. Instead, we're seeing them eat the pizza, talk about stuff that we. It's just. Uh, so I have some nitpicks <laughs> still with the show. At the end of the day, though, Survivor, Survivor, I still love the show. There's still so many great moments. The the back, you know, the the blind sides, the 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 the, the cast, and this the situation. Because even though it was a, a lot of things advantage and structure wise that was similar to 41, you put different people in there, yeah, different outcomes, and it's yep. just it's it's really cool to see kind of the social experiment go down, but. All right, that is all we got for this week. A big show, a lot of pop culture happened in the last week or two. And next week, we got some more stuff as well. Uh, The Boys, season three. It's finally back. We're going to talk about the premiere of season three. If it's been a while and you need a refresher, don't worry. We did a clip show. We've, We've covered technically every episode of The Boys, season one and two. So about a week ago we released a clip show compiling all of our coverage so you can you can watch it uh, and just you know get caught up a little refresher or if you've never seen the boys you can watch it along with us cuz it's like in batches so you can watch three episodes listen to our discussion three episodes our discussion so it could be a cool way to catch up for season 3 which returns later this week you can find episodes of the podcast on YouTube Apple Podcasts Spotify the blog uh, doordonsi.com where are live Monday nights Twitch.tv slash Duradunsi, 8 p.m. Eastern. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Duradunsi. Got to shout out Nick for all those comments and reviews. Thank you, Nick. Mm-hmm. And I got to thank both of you guys for joining me tonight on a holiday for, for, for Kyle going to the movies with me today. IMAX yeah. screening. Yeah. For John for directing the show, putting it up on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. I couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah, man. You guys are my wingmen. <laughs> that's where you say no you're my wingman that's that's how the movie ended in 86 no. Any, anytime now no i'm okay. the they call me the hangman oh I'll leave okay, the hang- okay. <laughs> and i'm i'm bob actually i'll see if i can do this live right before we end we're, we're already over tonight on my instagram I, I posted a picture of kyle and i and i asked are we maverick and goose or more like maverick and bob and we'll see what the results are live on the podcast. Maverick and Bob. So I am I am the Bob to Kyle's Maverick. Okay. Ah, there we go. That's our that's our lead right now. Until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm Jabber. And I'm Converger. And that's all we got for Dora Duncy. Goodbye, everybody.